So this is Moshe, and he's the owner of the Shorshim shop, which is a biblical-based... It's a biblical-based shop. Everything in the store is biblically-based. The purpose of our shop is to sanctify God's name. But in the last 16 years, it seems to have developed another purpose, which is to build bridges between Orthodox Jews, such as myself, and the Christian world. So Isaiah 56 is critical because we're in the era of Isaiah 56. And I'll explain what I mean. Um, one of the difficult things for many people in the last little while is to understand why Israel seems to be so prominent, especially since Christianity has gone through a great phase of replacement theology, meaning the church took over for Israel, so therefore, but suddenly 2,000 years people are finding understanding, based on your verse in Romans, that even if you thought that you were the blossoming branch that was being grafted onto the withering root, you realize that's impossible. You can't have a blossoming branch if the root is withering. So if you want to understand the branch, you need to come to grips. If you want to understand what sustains the branch, you need to come to grips with what it is that sustains the root, which is perhaps what Paul meant in your Bible when he said, don't assume you support the root, the root supports you. So for some reason in this last phase of history, which is really what we're in, um, Israel seems to be prominent. Right? But Correct. for 2,000 years, people have assumed that God's everywhere. He is. But God does have an appointed place in this city. And God does have an appointed city, and you're standing in it. And, he's, and you're 50 meters away from the central spot in the universe that God calls the footstool of his throne. Nothing will be the same after you've had this experience. And if you thought you came here for whatever reason you came here, you can kiss all the thoughts goodbye. You're only here because God invited you, and the only reason he invited you is your father in heaven wanted to spend some time with you in his house. Period. Exclamation point. There ain't no more. How does it all relate to Isaiah 56? First of all, you have to go to Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2 and Micah have an identical verse, and the verses say, When the nations will say, For out of Zion shall come forth the word of God, then they shall turn their stories to plowshares. Right? The redemption of the world seems to focus for some reason about mankind accepting God's sovereignty, and if he says, I have an appointed place, it's what he says. And when that humility, which is the key, by the way, humility is the key, when that humility comes and suddenly you realize you're standing in God's house. You're not visiting Turkey and Greece, you're in your father's house. When you understand that, then you have the ability to welcome the next phase. The UN, for example, doesn't get it, and what they wrote on their wall is, they shall turn the swords to plowshares, left up the first part of the verse. How does all that relate to Isaiah 56? So the key in Isaiah 56 is um, there is going to be a temple. I don't know where you guys stand on it, but there is going to be a temple. Because God it. says there's going to be a temple. Zechariah said, Ezekiel said, and that temple is going to be a prayer house for all nations. Mm -hmm. And that temple is going to be a place where all of us will stand together and worship our same Father in heaven. And regardless of what we think separates us, we're going to find that those are minuscule compared to our Father in heaven, and therefore we're going to find ourselves much closer than we ever thought was possible. Isaiah 56 seems to be the key. Okay, What is happening is... I, I, the Christian world is slowly developing, or certain groups in it, into Isaiah 56 people. And what does Isaiah 56 say? It says like this, So that not the foreigner has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, He'll separate me from his people, and let not the barren one say, Behold, I am a favorable tree, etc., etc. But he goes on, he says, And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to serve him, and to love the name of the Lord, and to become servants unto him, all those who guard the Sabbath against desecration, and grasp my covenant tightly, and that you're going to have to spend the rest of your life learning what covenant means. I will bring them to my holy mountain, I will gladden them in my house of prayer. Their elevation offerings, their feast offerings will find favor in my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Meaning, you're going to have to understand that it isn't about doctrine, it's about God's sovereignty. And when you can accept God's sovereignty, and the Sabbath is the key to God's sovereignty, understanding that He is the Master, right? uh, and He's the King. Right? When you understand that, then all the pieces of the puzzle to come together. What we're seeing in this world, by the way, you're seeing it more in America than we are here, is the world is being separated. I think your Bible talks about goat and sheep. Mm -hmm. We're watching it, and the measuring stick seems to be Israel. And, and what you're seeing is people who are doing everything possible to make sure the doctrine becomes more sovereign than God. Those that can understand that God's more sovereign than doctrine are suddenly going to find themselves fitting the Isaiah 56 people. And when you get Isaiah 56, I'm not going to give you some more. When you get Isaiah 56, when you start feeling it in your bones, when you start feeling yourself holding on to that covenant I put, when you start walking through that gateway that's called the Shabbat, you're also going to find yourself suddenly realizing that there's a verse in Isaiah 66, which is even more dramatic and more powerful than anybody, and no one seems to ever read that verse. But I'm going to leave that for you to find. That's my five to six minutes. Okay, um, <laughs> the number 56. 
So the, the key about six is first important. Six represents the natural world, right? Seven represents holiness in the natural world, and we all think seven's the number, right? Seven is holy, and what can be better than holy? And eight is eternity, by the way. Eight always represents an eternal covenant. Even in scripture, even the symbol for infinity is an eight on its side. Six is just important. God doesn't say, I want you to keep the Sabbath. God says, I want you to work six days. There's something about taking this world and refashioning it to be a vessel for God that only allows the seven, number seven to come in. So six is important, but six, in this case, and 56 comes after 50, and 50 is renewal. 50 is wisdom. 50 is the letter no, and I don't want to get too much into it, but 50 represents the wisdom that you attain. Any of you who reached that wonderful age, you already know it. There's a certain sense of calmness and, and, and I got it. I'm not running anymore. Now I've got to just assimilate what I've come. So now you're starting, after 50, the new revelation of what 6 is. You thought 6 was building things for yourself. After 50, you suddenly realize 6 is really about building things in order to create the 7th. You want more. We're heading into a period where suddenly the creation of the Sabbath he talks about, which is the seven again, is going to be about learning how to take the world and really refashioning it to be a vessel for him. I'm going to teach you one last thing. Seventh day, the Sabbath. It says on the six days of the week God created the world, and on the seventh day he rested. What does it mean he rested? He didn't work. Well, God doesn't need to rest. Right? God doesn't need the seventh day to rest. So it's not that type of rested. Six days God created the world, and on the seventh day he rested. He indwelled. Interesting, because uh, God used the number 56 to bring us here. I know that. It's found four places, the number 56 is found four places in the Old Testament. Three of them are in Ezra chapter 2. One place in the Old Testament, the number 56 stands alone. The three other places, it's like 956 or 1,056. Am I saying that clearly? Yeah, yeah. But all four verses refer to people coming to rebuild the temple. So the application of 56, if you just look at Bible verses, Isaiah 56 um, is about as you have just said. So in Orthodox literature, Orthodox study of numbers, would they say, you gave to Janet a definition of 56 as, uh, Janet, help me. Uh, being grafted into into the vine and the root? Well, it, actually, you're using your terms. Mm -hmm. I didn't use those terms. Mm -hmm. But you're using your terms as you understand it from Romans to apply to what the verse here in Isaiah 56 says. Those that will hold tightly and be connected to. Mm -hmm. uh, that we found a stamp. Uh, one of the guys was buying a postcard and it's a 5.60 so. shekel stamp. And um, what does it say on it? Birthright. Israeli birthright. Okay. Does that relate to 56? Nothing but nothing in the world is coincidental. Well, so, <laughs> so, so since nothing is coincidental, it's all about And our birthright. bus license plate is 56 really? today. That's so. very cool. But if you go back to Isaiah 56, it's talking about even those that don't have a clear birthright will be able to hold on and grasp on tightly. So I think it, it, it connects. But one last piece then, I will tell you, about the building of the tabernacle. There's a very strange verse at the end where Moses all of a sudden is left with 1,750 uh, 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 shekels. They used up the 300,000 mm -hmm. to build the tabernacle. He's left with 1,750, and he doesn't know what to do with it. God says, I want to use these to make the vavim. The vavim are the hooks that hold all the temple and the tabernacle together. Mm -hmm. right? Vav is the Hebrew letter that equals six. Mm -hmm. The secret of the world, I mean, in our deep understandings, the Vav is called, the letter Vav is called the letter of truth. Because lying in this world is about making believe that everything's random. Everything just happens thence. That's Amalek, teaching us that nothing's true, everything's just, you thought there was, you know, everything's just random. Don't, don't think there's a God. Vav is the letter of truth because Vav tells you that everything is connected. Right? Mm -hmm. And so when you build day after day after day, the sixth day of the week, and realize that it's really connected to the seventh, you understand its purpose. If it's really just connected to you, you've lost its purpose, it's just random. So again, the six keeps coming back. 50 is critical, as I said, because 50 is renewal, 50 is wisdom, 50 is... is it. It's also a jubilee. This, uh, all for the same reasons. Mm -hmm.
It's jubilee because it's renewal, etc., etc., etc. It's giving back to God and saying, I get it now. It's not me, it's Him. Have you read the book, The Temple at the Center of Time? No, I haven't. Um, it's a study of Isaac Newton, who died 200 years ago, mathematician. Right, and I know some of in the right. In the shortest, uh, that the Temple, the Holy of Holies, is the center of the whole earth. And there's a correlation between distance and time. If you measure distance from the temple to locations about the earth that have had a significant interaction with the development of the nation of Israel, there will be a correlation between that distance and time. For instance, uh, Babylon. Uh, Cyrus the Great released the Jews out of Babylon. Uh, the date was 540 what? 548. 548. You know how far Babylon is from the Temple Mount? 548. Miles. Cool. London. It's the center of London. Uh, the British partition, and they became a nation in 1948. You know how many miles the center of London is from the Temple Mount? Cool. I like it. 1948 miles. Mecca. The stone in Mecca, just as a point of reference. You know how far it is from the center of the Temple Mount? Six hundred and sixty-six miles. No. That, that already is in your Bible. That's not in ours. Pardon? That's in your Bible, not in ours. But yeah. I hear it. No, that's in the book, no, no, The Temple of the Center of Time. No, no, I know, but the oh. 666 is oh, okay. the Revelation. Right? Got it. Right, right. Look. So you're, you're having a picture made right. of Isaiah 56, uh, and it's being developed. Right. Yeah, when it's finished, how much will it cost? How much will it cost? To buy it. Oh, I see. When it, oh, I'm sorry, that picture on the... I thought you were talking about Isaac Newton's no. picture. No. I don't, I don't know. It all depends on what the artist is, is, is ready to do. You know, We're talking the 100 shekels, 120 shekels. Not a lot okay, can we buy the first no. one? You have the first one as a gift. No. So you don't have to buy it. When it comes... Be, be in touch with me and, and your I'll family. give you my address. Buying it would cheapen this encounter. So. Uh -huh. 